12 million to order. Um, Ms. Maraisi, can you do a roll call, please? Okay, so time is 532. Um, McGinnis Rower? Here. Wellman? Here. Cotton? Here. Warnick? Here. Royster? Here. You sound very speechery right then. I do, because they can't hear me. Like, yeah. I don't have a mic, you guys do. Oh, okay. So I'm using my teacher voice tonight, folks. Okay, first up, the district update. Sarah's Kelsey Grant. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring some things up front. I always have things to share, so I'm sharing some things. I love people. sharing. And a lot of you, I don't know if you've gotten to meet Miss uh, Sarah Kelsey. She is our new hire for curriculum, and she is amazing. Um, oh, thank you. Originally mm -hmm. a teacher at McKell Elementary, and then left us to go teach at Moorhead State to uh, get new teachers into our theater system, and then whenever this opportunity came open, she was excited to return to Greenham County. Mm -hmm. So, well, she's absolutely. returned for us, and uh, she is actually going to share with you about the grant of her and Becky Corsetti group. Welcome back, first off. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be back. It's honestly like coming home again. The, the time I was away, I'm, I missed Greenham the whole entire time, so I'm very glad to be back, and I'm really glad to be working on the grant. Um, earlier this year, I did partner with Becky Corsetti to kind of write this grant. It's called the Kentucky Comprehensive Literacy Grant. I gave you all a quick info sheet that you can look at as well, but I also created a little slideshow to kind of talk to you about it. Um, so first of all, it's a competitive grant, which means we had to compete with other districts around the state of Kentucky for this grant. Um, and you'll, yeah. So basically, the grant is designed to put a lot of dollars into our literacy here in Greenup County. The amount of money over four years is $1.1 million, which is huge amounts of money. Um, of course, there are some restrictions about how we can spend that money. It has to be focused on literacy, which we're really excited about. And then the other thing that you should know is that we have to um, work on literacy from birth through grade 12, which has been kind of a challenge, but we've really, I, I feel like we've risen to the occasion because it really forced us to look into our preschools and daycares to kind of seek out where are those students that are in that birth to age five range and how can we help them. Um, so that's the basics. This year we get to spend $300,000 of the money, so they do split it up over four years. And then they also dictate um, how much we can spend in each of these age ranges. So we have to spend so much money on birth to age five. We have to spend another amount on elementary only, and then another amount on middle and high school. So that's something that we're working on. So here's just some of the things that we're working on, some of the projects we have going for our birth through age five. I'm really excited about this one. And I think it's because we don't get to really work with those students very much. So this is a really big opportunity for us to reach out to those populations. So let me just show you. So this ready for kindergarten, basically, this is a huge tote full of great games and materials that we can send out to different agencies. So you can see that there's all kinds of really fun games, all kinds of stuff in there. Um, we have kids for um, ages two and three, so we're gonna work with the Greenup County Health Department Hands Program to distribute those. We're also gonna distribute some through the daycares, so that's gonna be really, really great. Um, this Imagination Library, I think we all got really excited about it. Um, are you all familiar with Imagination Library and kind of how it works? Basically, Dolly Parton started this years ago in Tennessee, and she basically sends a book to every child up till their fifth birthday, one a month. And so we were able to actually get in on that and pay a very small fee to enroll <laughs> children here in our district, which was really cool. We also bought tons of books for our, our uh, preschools and daycares. This here is called Zoophonics, and it's just a program that also injects more resources into those, those learning ranges. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Oh, I love this one. <laughs> um, elementary, we kind of did a lot of the same thing, but we're really focused on elementary with um, guided reading. We want to try to um, help teachers have the resources to really teach small groups. So we um, invested quite a bit in these guided reading libraries. So they kind of look like this up here at the top. I've actually been, if I look a little disheveled, I've been in the schools today unpacking boxes and putting things on shelves and rolling around and getting dirty out there. Um, 
but also we're, we're focusing on assessment. How can we find out more about what, what students need as readers? And um, we're also, this is a fun piece. It's called Literacy Spotlight. And so every single nine weeks, we're buying all the teachers a book that they can work together in common to create activities literacy related and share out to their, their classroom. So for our primary, they're doing this little book called Grumpy Monkey this nine weeks, which is so fun. Um, our intermediate is doing Wish Tree, which is another really fun book. Of course, lots, lots and lots of books. We're going to focus on dyslexia a little bit. Our teachers need more resources um, in, in terms of just understanding what dyslexia is and how we can address the needs related to dyslexia. So we have some things in place this year to really focus on dyslexia. Okay. And then at middle and high school, we're doing some of the uh, same kinds of things, but we're adding on some digital components. We found this group called Fall It, and they make something called Light Boxes. And basically the way that it works is they get hard copies of the books, but they also get a digital version of the books that they, the students can explore, and then it has links to help them go to other places and research deeper on the topics that their book is covering. So that's really cool. We're also injecting money directly into the middle and high school libraries. You know, their collections are starting to get a little outdated, and that's been a common concern across the district. Some of them hadn't really injected a ton of new resources in the last 10 years. You know, it was just small amounts. So I'm going to put large amounts of money back into those libraries. Okay, and I hope you all see this. We're gonna try really hard to really push this out into the community, make teachers engaged and want to do more with literacy. So I have this hashtag. It's Musketeer Readers. And basically with this, what I'm hoping is that teachers can post on our social media all of the activities and the things that they're doing with literacy. And what we're gonna do is a drawing. So for every teacher that um, uses the hashtag, we're going to put them in drawings for more literacy resources. Okay? So what questions do you have? I went through that really fast. What questions do you have about the grant? My only question is how how with a zero with the birth to five five years old, how how do we get into all the the county halls? I know you talked about right. daycare, but you know, a lot of mm -hmm. people don't go to daycare. And that's where we're hoping to partner with the Greenup County Health Department. They have the program called HANDS, and they go out to a lot of the more disadvantaged kind of groups of, of people that are out in the, the community, and they can reach out directly for us. I mean, it's kind of difficult. You know, we know we're not going to reach every single family, but everyone that we can reach is another one that we've, you know, that we've reached out to and given them the resources. But we're hoping that the health department and we've also partnered with the library to kind of help us with some of this as well. Um, I, there's other groups. We partnered with quite a few community agencies that we knew could help us a little bit more. So yeah, the hands department, I'm really hoping they're the ones who can utilize these the most. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, because I was sitting here thinking about hospitals. Because you only have two hospitals, I mean, that you could grab SMC, deliver yeah. Kentucky mm -hmm. Kids and... yeah. Oh, and you have to be very careful about privacy yeah. concerns. Yeah, privacy concerns is another thing that hindered me a little bit in trying to find these families. So definitely um, at the Kentucky Department of Ed, they have helped to guide us in how we can uncover those families. And we know that the first year we're only going to be able to uncover uh, this amount, but as the years go by, we'll continue scraping away at that for sure. We'll also have um, resources and connections made by our preschool whenever mm -hmm. they come to enroll they always have other children with them yes so that's going to help us link do we have this a this popped in my head so things happen that way sometimes <laughs> uh, do we we will have like flowers that maybe we could put in like uh, mm -hmm. OBGYN doctor's mm -hmm. offices that kind of thing that's a great idea we will definitely. Mm -hmm. it's a good idea Lance. that is a very good okay. idea um, the other thing that's pretty cool, of course we'll use social media as well, but the other cool thing about these kits is even though this kit is designed for ages four through five, when the parents get their kit, it actually has activities for what they can do at home with ages zero to one, um, one to two, two to three, three to four. So if they have other children in the home, 
they can be doing a lot of this, um, using the same literacy resources, do a lot of different activities with all of their, their kids in the home, which is really exciting. And Melissa Latimer, she's a huge resource with these populations. So she's been helping me out quite a bit on that. And it's like you've hit, oh, go ahead. Who uh, evaluates the children for dyslexia? Um, so here's the thing, with dyslexia, um, there are screeners that we can do as a teachers, um, but they're not true evaluations. But what we can do is with screeners, they will identify the students who are at risk for dyslexia. And here's what we know about reading instruction. Good reading instruction is good reading instruction. So even if a kid isn't formally diagnosed with dyslexia, the good instruction that we inject into our system is going to be good for them no matter whether they're formally diagnosed or not. But an actual medical professional would have to formally diagnose. And this teaches phonics in the early early grades? It is. So we, we're calling it structured literacy. And it is a, a deep look at the phonological awareness. So that's the, you know, right before phonics, what they need to know. And also print concepts and print awareness. So yeah, that's, and we're working with KEDC to design some workshops for our teachers. That's the one thing I didn't talk a lot about, but our teachers will be doing a lot of professional development with this. In fact, a large portion of our money has to go toward PD. So with the professional learning, all of the teachers participating in year one have to do 60 hours, which is a lot. But they can count in school yeah. hours where they collaborate in small communities as well. So that's pretty great. And then at the end of the four years, um, Mr. Cotton, they all have to, every teacher has to participate in some way in literacy-related PD. So, yeah. And this was all approved through each individual school site base uh, before they even finished the application process. They presented all of this to the site base and said, okay, if we get this grant, this is what we're going to ask of your teachers. Mm -hmm. So each site base voted on this and approved to implement this if we were to receive the grant. Yeah, and to, to go a little deeper on that, I have been going out to every single, sorry, I've been going out to every single school and meeting with small groups of their teachers to continue working on, on what we call their school literacy plan. So we also have a district literacy plan that we've developed through this process. And now the schools have now been working on their plan. So their plan is basically like a 30, 60, 90. And they're meeting every month to figure out what they need to do in order to keep improving in literacy. It's taken a lot of footwork. I feel like, so I've been officially working here a month but I'm, I'm up on the road every day because I'm going out to all the schools and helping them look at their resources and figure out you know, what it is that they need from me next. So the grant has definitely been a huge part of what I'm working on, but I'm excited about it because it's ultimately, it's for our kids. It sounds like you totally hit the ground running. I'm sorry that you can't see anybody smiling behind the camera. I'm sitting here smiling, beaming. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. So well, I can't believe how many principals have messaged and said, Sarah's amazing. We're so excited. Aww. She really got our teachers energized. So she has really hit the ground running and people are embracing her energy. So we awesome. appreciate you. Any other it's questions? all about how you present it. It really is. It, it is. is. And I knew teachers would be very upset about the 60 hours, some of them especially, because that's a lot of extra work. But when I really showed them all of the great things that we have to accompany those 60 hours, and we actually just finished with some of our teachers a week-long TV last week. They did 42 hours last week, some of our teachers. And at the end of the week, they were like, that was too short. We want more. So I was very encouraged by that. <clears throat> all right. Any other questions? Thank you all so much you, Thank you. for your time. Thank you. Good job. Thanks, Sarah. Good job. Your first presentation. Yay. Thank you. Great thing. Yeah, she's awesome. <laughs> I'm going to work hard at it. Okay. Um, I believe oh. next up is. Yeah. I was trying. I was waiting on you to get to talk. I'm sorry. I don't shut up well. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Next up, we have our new athletic director, who I might add, looks wonderful in green. <laughs> Thank you for choosing that color this evening. Thank you very much. You're it's welcome. Honored to be here. I won't take up a lot of your time. Um, one of the things through the National Federation of High Schools, which is the umbrella group that all the state associations belong to, we have an opportunity to get two Pixelot cameras, which I'll show you just a real brief clip. They're fixed cameras, they're unmanned, no one has to operate them. And we can get those at a greatly reduced rate of $2,500 if we act now. One would be in our football stadium, one would be in our gymnasium. And I think looking at 
maybe some of the things that are upcoming and certainly in the future, uh, whether fans will be able to attend or not, but a lot of other things too. Uh, I, I think it would be a good investment if we could do that at this time. If, Mrs. Uh, Fife, if you want to show that clip, this is from Roswell High School. This explains it better than I ever could. Roswell High School in Roswell, Georgia. The pixel art system was a no-brainer for us at Roswell High School once we saw how easy it was. We have one in our stadium, we have one in our gym. We're able to stream football, basketball, volleyball, soccer, lacrosse, wrestling, as well as non-athletic events from our VIP night to open house to pep rallies. Uh, we're able to stream it for all levels, varsity, JV, and freshman. In the first three months, we probably streamed 75 games, and we will stream over 200 games by the end of the school year. We really love this technology. It's one of the few things in an athletic department that we don't have to worry about. Once the units were installed, we don't have to do anything. We simply send our schedules in, the units turn on and off all by themselves, and the NFHS network provides all technical support. We feel like we're part of a growing sports network. More schools that we play are getting the Pixelot system installed, including some of our rivals. So it's great for our fans and even our families that don't live in the Roswell area. They can see our games home and away live stream. Our coaches really love the usefulness of the Pixelot systems for their program. We now have video for every game without somebody having to be filming in person. Our sports like volleyball and basketball play so many games, it's often a challenge to have somebody to film. We really enjoy all of our levels, freshmen, JV, varsity, having film available, whereas freshmen and JV in the past may not have had film available to them. For basketball, we get the full length game deposited directly to our coaching software without having to do anything. Another thing we love about the Pixelot system, we can log in, schedule a practice, a tryout, a workout, make it private so that it's only accessible to me and my staff, and then we can look at it on any device we choose immediately afterwards. In, in our experience, the Pixelot system has become an indispensable part of the development of our program and being competitive at the top classification in the state of Georgia. So it's kind of normally in normal times each one of those cameras are about seven thousand dollars a piece. That doesn't include the installation. We have an opportunity now to get two of them for twenty five hundred dollars. It's a five year contract that you don't pay that fee every year. If we're interested in revenue sharing now, because they do run some ads on there, if we pay $1,500, then we would immediately start getting some revenue sharing. A subscription fee to that, to see streaming, it's like $12.99 a month, or if you want the whole year, it's $70. And you see every event that streams for us. Is that through, is that the same one that's on the KHSA website? Well, they, they're partnered you know, with all the state associations. And the thing about being an NFH is if you go with this, if there are other area schools, let's say Round County or Lawrence County decides to do this too, when our teams are away at their sites, if you've got a subscription, you can watch those games too. If Carl has a granddaughter that lives in Arizona playing soccer and they're in the NFH school, they can log on and watch her play or wherever that is if they're, if they're in this program. So certainly with the way things are going now, not so much as a revenue stream for us, but getting our product out there with who knows what's going to happen in the next three or four months, I think now would be a good time to take that chance and, and kind of go from there. It will have issues. There will be, you know, glitches here and there, but I think this is the way of the future, and I, I would think it would be great for Green County to get in on the ground level. Mr. Sparks, who monitors this? He said he this goes to the central site or something. Their headquarters are in Atlanta. About every three weeks, myself or someone would send in the schedules and if they say okay volleyball night versus raceland jv game starts at six that's logged to start on at six okay that camera automatically kicks on right. and it kicks off at a certain time yeah. now with you know how weather and with cancellations they are linked in we have a statewide system that miss five knows about called the arbiter system that assigns officials 
if I call Joe Billman and change the time of a basketball game, it's automatically linked to that and it changes that time on the camera. So I don't, that's a step that's taken out. So we're, we're just paying $2,500 and we get all the services? Yep. And if anybody out there wants to buy a $70 for the whole year, then that's up to the individual to yes. purchase that? Correct. Or if they say they just wanted to watch uh, their, their daughter only play volleyball and they only wanted to watch September and October, that's 25 bucks. And there's, those are archived too where they can go back and look at them at home or whatever. Yeah, I know, I know football uses that one. Yes. Would that replace Huddle or not? This is not compatible with Huddle at this time. I think on down the road, I think this company has a video sharing service as well, separate from Huddle, so okay. it's totally separate from that. I was gonna say, we pay for that every year too. Yes, right? we did, we pay, but last year we paid Huddle over $5,000. Yeah. We paid Huddle $5,000 for football? Football and boys and girls basketball. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we paid five twenty five hundred. we can get all of them on this system? Um, yeah, it's, but if the coaches wanted to use them, now they pedal for football this year. Didn't pay, you didn't pay the front. Yeah. I don't know why, as a coach, if you had this, that you wouldn't have used it. Now, yeah. you can't download those games to a CD and trade it with right. Kalamazoo. Yeah. So, uh, Campbellville High School, Tim Dyson is their AD. They're getting theirs installed this week. Bold East has had it for three years. They love it. It's just starting to get a hold of them with everything we're dealing with now. We may start football in September and they may say no fans. But can you trade, I mean, if, if we had this system and, and Russell had this system, could we trade film that way? Yes. On there, they could mm -hmm. see our they could. There. Well, if they had it, they could see our games anyway. They now, we have a chance to block them out for a certain time. Okay. But, you know, TJ could watch our games and Zach could watch his. Both of us were in NFA schools. So they could get a package. <laughs> they could, yeah. 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 <clears throat> and if we do like this, is there a way if we wanted to add to our baseball and softball? If if you like this, but now I asked her when I, I got on the, the webinar the other day if we wanted more than two. She says they're only letting you have two now when they get through the first round of schools. If they still have this deal available, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. you call back and say, hey, we'd like to have one for baseball mm -hmm. and soccer. Okay. That's my pitch. I think it's a great opportunity. <laughs> so when do we need to know? Sooner, the, sooner we decide, the farther up in line we get. I'll make that motion to proceed with um, purchasing the two cameras for $2,500 a piece. Mm -hmm. Going into the contract? Yes. yes. And I'll second. All those in favor? Uh, Five zero. Can I make one other thing? You have an option of revenue sharing your first year. I don't know if we want to do that to where we get twenty dollars for every subscription. That's up. I don't. That's up to you all. What do you recommend? I would do it because that covers the first three years. If you sell fifty, you know. Because you would sell ads. To get that on there. No, you said if they said for every subscription they sell, uh -huh. we get twenty dollars. Let's do it. And what yeah. that cost us? That fifteen hundred dollars over three years. Oh, oh over three years. Fifteen hundred dollars in revenue share. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So do you need me to amend that motion? I, I would that recommend motion that. Today? Just, just add to it. Just make a separate motion mm -hmm. to do the revenue share. Okay. Add to that motion. I'll make a motion to do the revenue sharing. Can I get a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. They'll be here, they'll be here in the morning. <laughs> See how agreeable Greenwich County is with you? Always have been to me. <laughs> <laughs> We're lucky to have you. My computer so. has you. gone haywire. Delegations. Any delegations? Um, the sheet is back there by Mr. Sparks. Do you see that anybody has signed in on that green sheet? I've got it right here. Oh, I'm sorry. No one? How about no? No. no. Okay. 
<laughs> Mr. Collier, is there anything coming up on the last? Nothing week? yet. Okay, then we're good. All right. Next up, we can I get a motion to wait a minute, where are you going? It's just an acknowledgement. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Next up, can I get a motion to approve the uh, consent items? I'll make that motion. Sorry. Second. Call seconds. Any questions on that? All those in favor? I got another oh, question. Sorry. Well, yeah. Maintenance report. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I mean, we got we got something on down in about the road, ain't we? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. That's all separate. Well, I mean, we'll all good? Okay, I'll just wait for that. Thank you. Mr. Cotton, did you Mr. have a question? Mr. Cotton, a question? No, I think we're going on the same thing. Okay. I was just a step behind this year. <laughs> I'm having to go off of you, Rebecca, so I can get my computer. Oh, okay. okay. All those in favor? Uh, uh, Five zero. Next up. <laughs> now the old business. Consider the recommendation of interim of Superintendent Morasi. Oh. To approve the 2020 KSBA annual policy update, second reading as submitted. Motion. I'll do the second. Any questions? You trying to tell us something on that? No. <laughs> I think sometimes they see my name and they leave it, but evidently I was doing this this time last year. Apparently. Yeah. So, no one has any questions? All right. All those in favor? Uh, five zero. Everyone's computer's running very yeah. slow this evening. It's probably my fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next, let's consider the recommendation of Superintendent Morasi to approve the transportation director job description. Final review as submitted. Can I get a motion? Motion. I'll second that. Anybody have any questions? This is basically second reading, if I remember right, isn't that right? Yes, this is just a final update review, and we are we are finished with it. Yeah, it says final review. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. All those in favor? Uh, uh, five zero. We haven't posted it. I guess we don't have any uh, applications yet. <laughs> All right, next we have the Wortland reworthing change order approved. Okay, we get ready to read. Consider the recommendation <laughs> of Superintendent Racy 2, Wortland reroof, approval of change order number one for the new gutters for the classroom wing and gymnasium. Approval of CO1 DPOs for the new gutters for the classroom wing and gymnasium. Approval of change order number two for the new downspouts for the classroom wing and gymnasium. Approval of CO2 DPOs for the new downspouts for the classroom wing and gymnasium. Approval of change order number three for the retrofit drains, deck transitions, wall panel modifications, and unused allowance. Approval of CO3 DPOs for the retrofit drains. That seems like we're doing the same thing here. Mm -hmm. Deck transitions and panel modifications and unused allowance. Can I get a motion? I'll make that motion. Say. Hey. Mr. Warnick, questions? Total cost is what? I'm sorry. I didn't hear the question. Total cost. Okay, so the cost is, it's not going to change anything that we've already approved on the BG, so it's just taking in some unused allowance and reappropriating some money to complete these projects. They knew once they got up there that there would be a chance that we had to do this. We just didn't want to include that and then not need it, so that's why we had our contingency in those BGs and why the state recommends that, and then our architect also did a very good job of making sure we had the appropriate contingency. I've spoken okay. with our architect and our bonding agent, Lincoln, and they've all looked over everything and everything is appropriate and customary. So we're doing a trade-off. Yeah. 
Yeah, and they just have to be pre-approved when we do that. That was going to be my question. Why, why did we not know this was going to happen before? Yeah, so we knew there was a, a chance. That's okay. why we built the contingency. Yep. We can't catch them on nothing. <laughs> Very good. <clears throat> All right. Any other questions? All those in favor? Uh, uh, now, let's move on to Mikhail. <laughs> Mikhail Reroof, consider recommendation of Superintendent Baracy to approve. Mikhail Reroof, approval of change order number one for new gutters and downspouts for the classroom wing and gymnasium. Approval of CO1 DPOs for the new gutters and downspouts for the classroom wing and gymnasium. Approval of change order number two for the retrofit drains, desk transitions, wall panel modifications, and unused allowance. Approval of the CO2 DPOs for the retrofit drains in two additional weeks for COVID-19 shutdown. All right, let's carry the motion. Motion. Mr. Crotton, second. Second. Mr. Royster. I would say it's the same situation as we had. The same situation, and then we're allowing them two weeks um, past the deadline for a COVID-19 situation they had amongst their workers. Uh, how, well, another question, I guess, if we go. So will these be done before school starts? We're on schedule. Okay. I'm hoping. We're on schedule. I'm yeah. seeing, I don't see little ants up there on top of one of the buildings. <laughs> <laughs> they were there this morning. Yeah, that's I'm, like, I'm hearing that they're doing. They're starting they're early, early. They're starting about two a.m. Two a.m. They were at McHale a couple okay. weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Five zero. Next up, the non-consent agenda. Approval of application for full-time emergency certification. Consider the recommendation of Superintendent Moracy to approve the application for full-time emergency certification. Can I get a motion? Motion. Is that Mr. Royster? Yep. Mr. Royster, second. Second. Ms. Wellman. Questions? Is this what we do every year? Yes, it's part of what we do every year in case we have a teacher who needs to do an extension of some sort or we have a person who comes in that is um, a non-traditional teaching uh, applicant, we can do an emergency certification for them. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Five zero. Consider the recommendation of Superintendent Moracy to approve our data data breach information and guidelines as presented. Can I get a motion? Motion. Mr. Warnick, I'll second. Questions? We did this last year, didn't we? Yeah. Mr. Carr's here to answer any questions Hi, you may Carr. have. Yeah. He's been lurking over. He has. I have. He's been social distancing like a like a good soldier. So I don't think you presented last year. Yeah, this about is the, yeah, this is the same thing we do every year. It's just a state requirement that it has to be brought to the board. Uh, you know, anytime that we have a data breach, we've got 72 hours to report it. And, um, you know, we've done this. Um, we're locked down pretty tight. The munis, only three people have access to personal information. Uh, only a handful of people in um, uh, the uh, STI and we keep all of our paper records locked up. And the piece right above that on the agenda, we actually have insurance against cyber attacks. Yeah. Oh. All right, anybody have any questions for Mr. Carr? All right, all those in favor? Uh, uh, five zero. Thanks, Mr. Carr. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Next, consider recommendation of Superintendent Moracy to approve the memorandum of agreement with Moorhead State University for the purpose of dual credit. We get a motion. Mr. Cotton. Second. Mr. Warning. It's another thing we do every year. Yeah. Thank goodness, saving a lot of parents' money. Yes. Yes. So. And you also take the, advantage of it. One of the things I will point out is even if our students do virtual academy, they can still do dual credit. And uh, because Moore had stayed in ACTC, they've worked out with us where that everything will be online anyway. So, okay. so that's an option for our people who were not even coming into the brick and mortar location. Awesome. Okay. All right. Anybody have any other questions? All those in favor? Uh, five zero. 
Next, please consider the recommendation of Superintendent Maracy to approve the memorandum of understanding with Phoenix Mental Health for school-based services as submitted. Make it a motion. Motion. Mr. Warnick, second. All second. Questions? Yeah, that's what, that was my question. Yeah, Where is Phoenix. this? Where's Phoenix? That's a new one on me. I've never heard of it. Yeah. It is through Scarlett in her list of, this is almost like having, um, how we have work through uh, Mountain Comp, different, this is just another, another little company that yeah, offers You don't know where they're... Scarlett is the one who made this arrangement. So my understanding is this would be another company that would be a non-profit. Portsmouth. Yeah. Who made the arrangement? Uh, Scarlett is the one who makes these arrangements. They all go through her. She screens them, finds out if they're decent, and then sends it to me to sign. This is extra. We didn't replace any. No. This is just another resource. This is a new, so it's a new one. Mm -hmm. Are you going to work with our people? Yes. In order to see any of our children, they would have to go through our schools. Okay. All right. Anyone have any other questions about that? All those in favor? Yes. Oh, what? Did someone say yell? Yeah. I did. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Do we get a report uh, monthly or uh, board meeting time as to how many kids they serviced? I mean, not only these, but all of the four or five that that used that we use the services of. I do not believe so at this time. We don't. We can give you a count of how many students are receiving services, but we can't give you a count of how many times they're seeing them. Unless we go. No, 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 no. You I just want, want to know how many times they, how many, if they saw 10, 10 patients that day, is that the, that's all the number I want. Okay, yeah, 10. that is something we can provide you, mm -hmm. yes, to know for, how many for students. For all these individuals sure. that we're, mm -hmm. we've got approved. That's doable. I would hope so. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, you too? Aye. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Five zero. Next, please consider the recommendation of Superintendent Maracy to approve the memorandum of agreement with Midway University for collaboration. I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Royster seconds. Is that Questions? no correct also? No, that is for student teachers and obser observers. Uh, oh, okay. We're just adding into that program. We figure the more people who want to come and learn with us, they will be a great recruiting tool as well. We find some Absolutely. solid teachers that way. All right. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, 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 five zero. <laughs> Next, please consider the recommendation of Superintendent Maracy to approve the professional development plan for 2020-2021 as submitted. Motion. Mr. Warnick? Second. Mr. Cotton? Questions? Looks like a busy year. It is a busy year. Um, Stacy has taken off exactly uh, where I left off as the former PD coordinator, and a lot of the things that you'll see in here are geared towards both meeting the needs of the grant that uh, Sarah just talked about a few minutes ago. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why it looks so large. But then another is we're doing quite a bit of time on how to do distance learning. So we're taking everything that we've ever learned about how to teach and we're putting it into how do we teach virtually. Um, because we do know that NTI is something that could very well happen. And we want to make sure that our um, students are getting the very best that our district has to offer. So part of professional development will be literally designing lessons by grade uh for each nti day so that all of this kind of fits into that any other questions we have no teachers <laughs> right now we are we still need a uh, a special ed teacher is one thing we're looking for we're but everything else is, is what's, good what school mikhail elementary so but we're working on it <laughs> and I mean that. 
I know, I know. Sure, you like the Little Caesars guy. Oh, the teacher needed. Hey, listen. <laughs> Whatever it takes, right? I pride myself in recruiting. I'm yes, good at it. You're all very good at it. All right. All those in favor? All right. Five zero. And I get puffed up too much, sir. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> all right. Next up. Right. Oh, God, I have not. We have not approved a school calendar in a month. I know. <laughs> it's just been a month. It's just been a month. It's just been a month. All right. So, just make number oops. ten. Okay. So I want to wait. I got to bring my motion first. Consider the recommendation of Superintendent Bracey to approve the school calendar and opening plans as submitted. Motion? Motion. Mr. Warnick? Second. Ms. Wellman seconds? Carry on, Ms. Bracey. Okay, so I just wanted to share with you our back to school opening plans. And this has not gone public yet. It will go out probably tomorrow just so that people will know the difference. <laughs> well, it's out right now. Right now. <laughs> you have two <tuned> in. <laughs> You have a sneak preview. Yes. Um, oh, that's funny. But we wanted to make sure that you had seen what was what were our big plans are right now. So first day, obviously, we're looking for August 26th. That's when both virtual and in person will begin. Um, traditional learning will be on site. We're offering five days per week using all of our healthy at school Kentucky guidelines, including face coverings and social distancing. Uh, in the event of a long-term closure due to an outbreak, then we will go into NTI. Um, so what we need our parents to understand and our families is NTI and the Virtual Learning Academy are two totally different things. Right. NTI right. are meant to just um, keep the learning going when we're intermittent and between breaks in school. Virtual is full-time online every day, okay? Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, registration, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to have on-site school nurses and mental health provision at each school. And then registration for students who are new to us, uh, it's going to begin August 10th. And those can all be done online virtually. We have a new online registration program through Infinite Campus that we're trying out. So we're going to try that with our brand new folks first. And then once we see how well that streamlines, then we're hoping next year that parents will be able to just go in and update everything online and we won't have that stack of papers that come home like we send home yes. every year. So this year, you know, each year we've managed to make it a smaller stack, which I appreciate. I'll commend Scarlett Shoemaker on that. But now we're gonna look at how can we get that completely virtual. Uh, we also have kiosks that are going on at each school. Uh, if a parent does not have internet and wants to come in and fill something out to get into the virtual, they can come into the school. There's kiosks and computers set up. All schools are open eight to three, Monday through Friday. Um, safety guidelines, whenever they are in the building uh, and on the bus, in the hallways, in classrooms where they cannot social distance, during lunch until they are seated, uh, recess unless social distancing guidelines are implement, implemented, and during physical education, again, unless we can implement. So we're scheduling things such as recess and physical education so that the kids can take down the mask. So we're deliberately doing schedules to help those kids be able to have a break because we're all sitting here in these masks and I can tell you they're hot. Yes. Uh, so we want our kids to feel uh, like they can take those down while they're doing their work seated at their desk as long as we can space out the classrooms accordingly. Uh, face shields are really only supposed to be approved with a medical waiver. Uh, we really recommend masks and see-through masks will be provided for certain populations. Okay. So this is what I'm going to say about face shields. Um, there are some also who have some um, mental stress about a mask and with that stated, we just need to know about that and we can approve a face shield that way as well. Okay, all right. I have ordered neck gaiters and the neck gaiters are going to be in this week and they all have Greenup County logos on them and every child will, we're hoping to give each one two that comes in person. That way they have something to wash with. And then also our um, our teachers will have one. So, well, I'm sorry, all staff will have one, not just our teachers, bus drivers, everyone. So, uh, On transportation, they must wear their face coverings on the bus. They're gonna be loaded in the back of the bus first and then filled up to the front. Um, so siblings are gonna have to sit together and seats are gonna be assigned for each route. So they will have a seating chart that they must adhere to and everything will be disinfected afterwards. What they need to understand is um, 
with this busing, there'll be no up moving around. It's set down, and this is where you're going to stay every day because that manifest gets recorded every day so that if there's ever an issue, we can look back and see where Johnny sat. Okay, so we always need to know where everybody is. <coughs> Same thing with health checks. There's will be temperature checks conducted for each student and staff before entering the school. Um, they'll have a questionnaire about COVID. Uh, parents who are dropped off, they cannot leave in the drop-off line until their child's temperature has been taken and that um, they have answered those questions. All right, uh, hand sanitizer will be provided and each school is gonna have a designated uh, nurses station. Nurses are going to be at every school and in that nursing station that will also be where we'll do the quarantine if we have somebody who has a fever. Now again a fever could be something as simple as the flu or strep throat. We don't know so we're going to have them sitting with the nurse until it's time for pickup. Uh, Non-essential visitors will be limited so if you come to pick up your child call ahead they'll get the child they'll walk them out to you so that you're not coming into the building. So those are the types of things we're putting into place. Uh, meals, they're going to do grab and go breakfast, and the kids can eat those in the classroom. And then lunch procedures are varying by each school, but most are trying to find a way to not have to eat lunch in the classroom so the kids can leave the rooms. Uh, cleaning, high tech services are going to be cleaned throughout the day. Deep cleaning and additional cleaning will be each evening. Um, for instance, high school kids who are changing classes, their teacher may very well, you know, spray their desks and hand them a wipe and let them wipe up their own area as they go out the door because that is their area. Uh, there's nothing wrong with asking a kid to wipe off their table on their way out the door. So the kid can wipe off their table, throw it away, and go out the door, and it'll be a nice clean area for the next kid. So um, that's what we're going to work on, and those are all procedures we'll have to practice. That's what we'll be doing when we first get into school is just practicing these procedures. Um, there's a response form here and this is kind of I've given this to every staff member in this building and then we're going over it with every staff member uh, in our district but it is just a flow chart a tree that lets you know what happens if someone were to be symptomatic or possibly test positive we know that this is a very big possibility and we are trying to have a preparation plan in place so that we can say okay this is where we are uh, we have a student who present symptoms. Well, these are the two things we can do. We can either go get a diagnosis or they can have an alternative diagnosis from a physician. Must isolate if they really have it, can return if the physician releases them. So we have a flow chart as to what's going to happen for every possible scenario. The same thing is going to be uh, there for even if we know whether or not we need to do emergency leave or FMLA, that same kind of flow chart exists. Okay. Um, we know that it's a very big possibility and we are making lots of alternative plans in place that if we do not see these numbers going down and we do continue to see them the rise in the green up area we will not risk it and uh, i just don't want to i don't want to put that fear out there to everyone it could be very well that we do have to start on mpi simply because we do not want to put people at risk but we do have plans in place. And what I'm saying about these plans, they've been a lot of work, a lot of people, a lot of heads put together to make it happen. And teachers being involved, we've had committees, we've had principals on board doing these things. Um, and I don't want them to think these plans are for nothing because even if we don't get to go back August 26th in person, we still are gonna need these plans whenever we do return. So we had to be proactive and make sure these plans are in place for the eventual return of students, whether it's in three weeks or if it's in nine weeks, okay? All right, do so go ahead and scroll down. Each school, and this is gonna go out on the website, where that you have how your day will look. So there'll be a link there that you can click on and it'll say, at the elementary school, when you are dropped off, your parents will pull up to cone A, B, or C, a teacher will greet you, take your temperature. I mean, it's very detailed as to how your day is going to look because it's kind of like, a, as a parent, I want to know what my child is going to experience when they're dropped off to school. So um, teams at each school have been working on these. So middle school and elementary and high all have different things that they're going to be doing. For instance, high school, they have car drivers. So we have to consider that. We also have some schools that are hubs for buses and they have a lot of kids that stand and wait at a school before they can go to the next school for bus transfers. So there are a lot of extra little procedures in there. 
So that will all be live whenever we put it on the website tomorrow. Okay, this is the one that went live today, the GC Virtual Learning Track. And this is a, a whole new concept. I feel like we're kind of on the cutting edge with this because we are providing a teacher to run this concept instead of having um, things just recorded from the classroom. So this will be a, a full on plan for each individual student. Uh, we'll be using a side vendor called Edgenuity, uh, some Nearpod, which is another uh, Mr. Collier who happens to be behind the camera today, can tell you a lot about some of these different programs that we're gonna be using. Um, everybody's gonna be receiving their supports through certified parents or certified teachers. If the parents are certified, they can come too. Mm -hmm. And um, they'll have regular communication. If a kid is not making adequate progress, they'll have to come in and meet. We'll have built-in supports for RTI. Um, we really have looked at even whether or not if you have an IEP or a 504, those types of things have been put into consideration so that no one can be excluded. The only thing we have to ask of you, because we really have no other option, we have to ask that you have internet. We'll provide the computer, but we need you to have internet. Okay. All so, right. So we are providing computers. If to they everybody. need a computer, we can provide it. They will have a sign out and they'll have a legal document that they sign off on saying they will take care of it and they will return it. So the ones that already have their own computer, we're not giving them another one. They don't have to, they can ask. I mean, we can't go to their homes and inspect and say, oh, you have a computer, you can't have this. But yes, yeah, so if they ask us for one, for each child that's enrolled, we can provide them a Chromebook. To keep it home. To keep it home. We do that during NTI as well. Okay. So, um, we do have enough in our district to go one-to-one -one with each child. So okay, we, good. We've been, yeah. we've been good, uh, good, frugal. good. Yes. So our goal is obviously to keep kids at our school and to be able to use those in school, but we know that right now we're in uncertain times and we may need to send those home. So the online reg registration, if you see on there um, in the orientation, it's all online today, it went live. If you do virtual, you will still begin school on August 26th and uh, you will have until September 5th to decide this is not for you and you would prefer to come back to school in person. So if you see that it maybe is more difficult than you thought, or you're having trouble keeping up with it, or your internet's not as strong as you thought it would be, then that is a perfect time for you to say, you know what, I think I'd rather come back to school. Same thing for a person who's chosen in-person instruction and they get to school and realize, hey, I, I think maybe I wanna try the virtual. They can sign up until September 5th, but once you're in there, you are locked in until December. So these are the different platforms that I spoke about earlier. Um, I won't read all those off, but they are something that an individual parent might try to purchase and spend a large sum of money to buy that for their students. So we are using our district pricing to cover each student. Okay, if you have questions about any of this, these are the individual schools that you want to call because we want our kids to understand and our parents that just because you do virtual does not mean you're no longer a part of your home school. You are still um, a McHale Bulldog. You are still a Wortland Wildcat. You're still a Greenwich County Musketeer. And you are still affiliated with those schools. So those schools will be checking in on you and you will be on their rosters. Our hope is this will entice some of our folks who have explored homeschooling and as opposed to returning their kids to the brick and mortar in-person schooling to understand that we're offering you something uh, to accomplish that goal for you without you having to go out and buy a curriculum. And you can still be a part of uh, Greenham County. All right, and that is all of that fabulous show. Mm -hmm. And then I think she's gonna pull up what the calendar uh, suggestion we have. And I don't know if Mr. Collier needs to come in and say anything about the calendar or not. Oh, bring him in, just cause we missed him. But what I will tell you is, if you look at these special dates, 17th, 28th, 17th, 7th, 20th, you see those little mm -hmm. gradient dates there? Mm -hmm. If you look at those particular dates, these are built-in automatic NTI days that are already pre-planned. Those are planned so that teachers can get back together and staff members can get back together and refocus and say, okay, what's working, what's not working? And make sure everybody's getting approach the right way. The other thing we're gonna do with it is intense cleaning. 
So while they're doing that, then other departments will be doing intense cleaning. So we have one day a month kind of built in there in different places. We did not do it on months where you already have long breaks because we didn't want to make it difficult on parents. But on months that we didn't have a lot of breaks in there, we scheduled in some dates just so that we can sit down and plan. If you'll notice in October, we did a couple because that's when it's supposed to rise again and have a high peak. That's what they were predicting to us whenever we made this calendar. So let me grab this. Just a moment. I have a question. Yeah. Before you get to Mr. Crowder. Yes. When you pull up to the school, you drop your child off, and we're going to take a temperature. Mm -hmm. Are we recording Johnny's name or whatever with his temp or what are we doing? Only if it's high. Only if it's Do high. Do we even make a check mark that we checked it? Yes, we have a roster. Okay. They'll have a roster. And they right. go down and they put their name, they check mark. Right. But so we know we did check Johnny's and then if it's, yes. if it's high, then and we're going to record it. That paper goes and gets put in a great big binder and okay. we have it on file that we have done our due diligence to check. All right. Yes. I'm not a very good tech guy. Okay. But whenever I, I saw on the screen, we're trying to make arrangements with vendors for more areas to offer Wi-Fi out in the more rural places. Right. How are we doing that? We are having to go out and um, reach out to like Armstrong and some different places and see what their possibilities are. We also have Tony working on how we can put buses out into the rural areas with Wi-Fi adapters and antennas on them. So it would become a source, a free source of internet for the community, and they would go out during the daytime. And so if we're on NTI and a kid doesn't have great internet, we can still go full on NTI paperless and go put a bus out there that sits there all day long so that kids can get their homework done on a computer. Wow. Cool. So that's, that's a good idea. So we just felt like the papers, I know a lot of people don't like the idea of not having packets and we're going to get a lot of kickback, but I'm going to need your support on that because those packets do not teach. I agree. Okay? And we need our kids to be taught, not do busy work. And so um, I'm a firm believer that we need to instruct even during NTI. So if someone asks you why aren't they ask, why are they not offering those packets? My kid can't do that work on his computer. Well, we're going to set up buses in the area to provide Wi-Fi in their neighborhood so that they can connect to it. That's our plan. Very plus good. Up. Plus, uh, that, that's, plus some, up. That's, some, that's some thinking out of the box. We, we are trying. We are trying. There's been a lot of sleepless nights in this room, is all I'm going to tell you. Let me bring Aaron Mr. Collier. Um, I had another question. Okay. I actually just texted him and said, come on in. But I Aaron, you're it. not busy. Okay. Thanks. Um, what I know there's a method to the madness. Mm -hmm. But you know, I ask this question. Why in the middle of the week? Oh, this is why. Because, because we do not want to, I'll be honest, we do not want to encourage long weekends. Mm -hmm. We want to encourage a mid break that they will have homework and things they can work on that day. So okay. construction will continue. Okay. So as far as students Makes go, sense. they'll have two days with kids or their teacher. That teacher will give them things they need to work on, on that day and then they'll do that and then they'll come back on Thursday and review it. Okay. So that provides continuous instruction. If you just do it on a Monday, maybe they do it, maybe they don't. Right. Okay. I knew there was a method. Yes. Good question, though. We're inching closer, Mr. Collier. We're getting real close. To the Mary Cow I know. <laughs> I just explained to them about the... <laughs> See what you did? I know. It's all my fault. I explained to them, Mr. Collier, about the NTI days and why you built those in automatically. So I've told them a little bit about that. Thank you. We have a okay. question online mm -hmm. about when will um, laptops be available. After they have done their virtual sign up and gotten everything completed uh -huh. and gotten their schedule in place, then we'll have a date that they can come in and pick them up. Okay. Would you just give one for family? Per child. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, there you go. Good, and remember, we're not giving, we're loaning. loaning. And there's a loan design. agreement Four. with that. So you need to bring the item back with the charger and the cords included. So what are we doing when A, they don't return it, or B, they return it and it's all smashed up? They receive a bill for that. Okay, now are we going to collect that? And we're going to talk to you about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Put that down on that yellow piece of paper. <laughs> Good job. 
crazy. <laughs> so, Aaron, I mean, oh, another calendar. She yes, this is, um, well, I think, our, our ninth calendar. This calendar, if you'll notice at the bottom, it's a variable student instructional year calendar. That's something that a lot of districts across the state have chosen to implement. <clears throat> and that's because it um, allows us to shorten the school year a little bit. So for example, you know, we typically have 175 instructional days mm -hmm. in our calendar. With this variable calendar, we are allowed to go below that 170 days and start later so that we can uh, get some plans in place and prepare for all of the requirements that we have to comply with with regards to COVID. Um, the one thing that does stay the same is we're still required 1,062 instructional hours. So what has happened is we've had to adjust the instructional day in some of our schools, work on elementary, Argolite, McKell Elementary. Those schools, the instructional calendars were um, changed so that within this 165 days, we still maintain the 1,062 uh, instructional hours. So we are able to go below 170 days. So how did you change theirs? Well, we, different hours, or we we find time within the school day. For example, one one school may have recess for longer than another one, uh -huh. and so you can shorten recess. You look at times in between it's passing. More instructional minutes. Yes. Right. We're just adding instructional minutes to that school day, and we might even lengthen the school day or start a little bit earlier. There's a lot of ways you can. Can do that. Sometimes it's just as simple as they might stop a little bit earlier to get ready for buses mm -hmm. and they wait three minutes before they do that, which some teachers teach over the limit anyway and they still do that. So I don't think they'll really see a difference in their day. Okay. So with that being said, basically um, we're at 165 instructional days and the, um, the NTI days, what that does is it allows us to fulfill the 185 day contract with our certified teachers. Uh, the staff will get 100, the, the state is granting 170 days credit, okay, to faculty. So we have five days that, that the state will credit us. With that being said, in 170 days, we have the five NTI days, which is 175 days for our certified faculty. And then you just you add in your uh, four PD days, your four holidays, and your opening and your closing. Um, a little time on the yeah. Those are the five days you made up. Right. And there at the, at the uh, beginning of the school year, we have time to plan for NTI and, and plan for the school year. So that gives us mm -hmm. a good amount of time prior to the students' first day of school, which which will be August the uh, 26th, they've been saying. And I'll go ahead and say that we have the teachers coming in early, all staff coming in early. I keep saying teachers, it's, it's a habit. Um, all staff will be coming in early to work on procedures and process and sanitation and how everything will run for in-person instruction. But also, each grade level will be meeting those days prior and saying, okay, first grade, let's plan 10 days worth of NTI together. And it might be five days that's instructional, five days that are assignments. That will be instruction, assignment, instruction, assignment. Mm -hmm. um, we want it district-wide so that whatever McKell at first grade is getting, Wortland at first grade is getting. Because then if that child moves because maybe there's an issue within the family or they just relocate in general, they're still able to keep up with what's going on. And I need to make a correction to what I said. The five days for the uh, for the certified staff will be with the planning days. Those five days are planning days. Mm -hmm. The NTI days are not planning days for teachers. Those are instructional days, and those NTI days will allow us to sanitize the schools mm -hmm. and to um, continue instruction. So those are built-in days to, mm -hmm. to allow us to distance and, and sanitize. We will pull the teachers together on those days, though, to plan. What are the, the last 12 days there in May and June? Those are makeup days, and they, they, they average our, uh, our last five years, and they give us makeup days. We just have to add those at the end of the calendar yeah. because they, uh, it's kind of a, an estimate of what we may possibly 
be going to snows and the right, right. And kind of it's just an average of the last it's five years. Floods and the floods and the right. And we'll just take those off at the end of the year when we submit to the state and just take those makeup days off. But we anticipate that there could be twelve makeup days this year based on the trends of the last five. When do we get to start calling October twenty? I don't know. I don't know. January <laughs> 1st? Yes, I guess so. I guess when we get into the year 2021. <laughs> so. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Collier? Well, they took, so you took out the, the president February, that holiday, I believe it. Yes. That's January's end. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't see any difference. If you want to take one out, you all take them both out. Okay, so the January was left in, or are you talking about January 4th? Mm. Or, yeah. okay, that was left in for transition because during that break, there's likely children who may decide to come off of virtual learning and re-enroll, or children who want to come out of in-person and go on virtual, and that gives an extra okay, day. You're saying that the first semester don't end until then? Right. Of so it'll be a day of. for when they return after the break to prepare for any new students that have come back. Okay. okay. So Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I don't think you should and take the other one out. Fine. No more questions? So, well, what? No more questions? How are we going to do RTI? With the virtual? Yeah. It, they have a, there is a, a built in component for RTI. With the ingenuity that we purchased, we could have one of the programs. Yeah, it has that feature, yes. We've accounted for that. Right, we, we monitor that and we're going to make sure that people are progressing and all that good stuff. Somebody is. Yes, and that'll be di there's a diagnostic assessment that will help us to uh, determine those students that need RTI. That'll be part of it. Okay. Anything else? Do we? You said earlier uh, the way things have been going with the increase in the virus around here. Have we just even looked at a time frame to say, okay, let's schedule a time frame from today on for the next 10 days and see what happens over those next 10 days to get an idea whether it's a major increase, 1%, 3%, 5% of the total, to whereas we may want to extend school. Have I confused you? Yes. Yes. Well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was really trying. You're communicating with Chris Crum almost oh, daily. No. So. All of our work goes through the health department. So we talk with him and let him know what's going on. He keeps us abreast. But I'll be honest, there's a very good chance that our governor could tell us what we are allowed to do. He just mandated today at four o'clock that no one could start before August 17th. Okay. Now, obviously, we had already had the forethought, I think we're a little bit ahead of the game, we had already thought about this and moved it to the August 26th date. Um, so we're really, and I stay in a, a message group with a group of area superintendents to see what their numbers look like and what's going on so that we're not sitting outside the box and being the only district that has opened wide up and everybody else is closed. So that is the last thing we want to do. Okay, so we're just dependent on the governor to say yay or nay and move your time back and whatever else. Yes. But we are actually getting ready to request he give us, we want to give him a date and say, could you tell us by this date? Because it is very difficult for us to plan for people to return and plan for NTI at the same time. Okay. Um, because you don't spend your money the exact same way. You put a budget together for either in-person instruction and in virtual, or you put a budget together for NTI. And so we really, you know, there's no point in buying plexiglass, a million masks, if we're never going to get to be in person. So we're really asking him to start giving us a little bit more definitive timeline on that, because we cannot plan appropriately if we're not told. We will abide by whatever he says, though. We're not going to go rogue. I don't think he would want me to do that, right? Okay. I got a question. Mm -hmm. If he would come and say, we're not going to have school until January. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of, at that point, doing NDI, could we do everybody virtual? 
Um, it would be very difficult to do everyone virtual simply because it is a, an adept program. I mean, you, you need some people who are very specific with that because not all kids are going to learn best that way, if that makes sense. Um, certain age groups, certain, certain kids really need that NTI one-to-one -one relationship with a teacher. So I can't guarantee that that would be what's best. Would a lot of people choose to go ahead and go that route? Absolutely. And if their child's doing fine on that route, great. Okay. But if not, that really, we still need to have those classroom teachers well, as far supporting. As far as us, if we do that, do we have enough teachers to do the virtual if we have more students in it? Yes, we can, we what can we can do is more. just convert some over into virtual. Okay. We had several applicants for the virtual. How many we got? So. How many have signed up for virtual already? Students, it just opened today, but whenever I walked away from it after an hour, 106 is where we were. In an hour. That's probably something. One time or another, we had a note or something that said we had 530. Those were ones who said they intended with intention. That was the survey intention. Okay. But it's been open for an hour. It was open for an hour today. I walked away from it. We were ever. You walked away from it? Well, I had to come in here, Carl. <laughs> All right, another question is somebody calls the school now. Mm -hmm. Who are they talking to? Do what? If an individual, a parent, calls the school, yes, who are they going to talk to regarding virtual or what okay. they're going to do? So when they call the school, the secretary, they'll either be a frisky coordinator at the front desk, a secretary, or an administrator. One of those, or the school counselor. They will all be there, and they'll all have the same information about it. So they'll be able, they should be able to answer their questions. If they can't answer their question, then they'll send us the information and let us know we need to call that person and give them better information. I had somebody reach out to me on Facebook through Messenger tonight <coughs> with a question and I said, give me your cell phone number. I will have someone call you tomorrow and give you all your options. Just because every person's information is a little more unique. All right, another question. We do have people in the schools now. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Eight to three? Eight to three. Okay. I guess my list is done. Okay. Okay, so we haven't approved this. So nobody has any more questions for anyone? About the calendar, about the opening plans. Okay. All right, so can I get, okay, we've done the motions. Can I get a vote? All those in favor? Uh -huh. Five zero. Carl, I didn't hear you, but. Um, I just want to say on that same thing, uh, I don't want to think y'all are going to bring California. Yes, they have. Yeah, they, yeah. they have worked very hard. I'm I didn't get a print out like he did. Um, what, this? Yeah, I printed it myself. From where? <laughs> <laughs> From where? Thank you, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Email, she said. I, I'll try not to have you make any more calendars. Okay, thank you. Hey, I wouldn't hold her to no, that, no, Aaron. No. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're going to get the new one about Wednesday. Oh, All right. Well, right. That's maybe. For sure, may say something different. Right. It just gets worse and worse and worse. Okay, next up, let's please consider the recommendation of Superintendent Maracy to approve the ability <laughs> to approve mm -hmm. COVID-19 emergency days at her discretion. Motion. Second. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead, Mr. Miss. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> questions? Uh, you got the question. No, I don't have questions. <laughs> you all have any questions? No questions? Okay. Okay. What? This has no to questions. do with uh, people of our of our people needing time off and whatever. Yes, for exposure to the virus. If they were exposed in some way, yeah. um, we would want to not have them use up their sick days. We would give them emergency. And if they don't, all of a sudden, after two or three days, they don't feel like they need to be here, then they take time. How much time? You mean with, with having a COVID diagnosis? Our goal is to make sure that they have a security blanket in if they were around somebody or subjected to something. Okay, but if they have to go quarantine and you're given 14 days or 10 days or mm -hmm. something, is that right? Yes. They just don't feel like they need to be here for this for a period of time. If they don't feel if they don't feel safe in the environment, yeah. I mean, there's a whole different uh, process that they can go through that has nothing to do with the emergency days okay. that they can claim that they feel unsafe, and that's a whole other. 
And they don't have to use their sick days either. No? Not really? Like, they use their sick days, but the way I look at it, is it like in a leave with mm -hmm. FMLA kind it's, of? It's very similar to FMLA. Okay. Yes. But they would use their sick days that they accumulate. They, they just can. can't come in and say. But they can choose not to as well. And just but not get they, paid? They would not get paid. Okay. okay. All right. Which has retirement impacts and right. everything. So they would but, either have to use their sick days or. Or their emergency <laughs> days that they get each mm -hmm. year yeah. or. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Makes sense. These All are right. for bona fide, like. I hey, I tested positive reasons. or. Correct. Mm -hmm. Or we know so, there was exposure right. in, the, in the building. Yes. Okay. All right. We're going to hope we don't have to use them. Yes. Yeah. Right. We have somebody that she, they think they have the symptoms and we take the temperature and it's elevated or whatever. Where do we send them to? They go to their doctor. They call their doctor and find out what they would like to do with them. For instance, they might send them to urgent care and have them rule out all the possibilities, such as a strep, an ear infection, a flu, and then their their doctor will refer them for testing. Okay. So that would be just like you not feeling well and what you would do. Yes. On that on that point, mm -hmm. have we thought any more about that KDMC nurse practitioner thing? We would really love to pursue with that, but we did not get any type of um, contract back from them because once we talked about it and everybody was kind of on the same page and we wanted to do one more presentation with our nurses so that they understood the concepts, um, COVID hit. Weren't they, yeah, weren't, they, weren't they supposed to send us a And they never sent a us a contract, contract we didn't get it. So I'm, I'm pretty sure COVID took over for them and they were unable to do that, but I don't know if you can I'm going to ask someone. Maybe our board chair could look into that. Because that would be a great access. Had we yes. had that in place, we could have actually became a testing center. Right. Um, but we don't have that in place right now. Testing now is done with King's dollars, and they can turn it around now in, what, 48 hours? 12. Two hours? 12. 12 hours. Great. I learned a lot about that today. It's very oh, it is? Yeah. Um, Okay. I've got some questions on right now. Okay. Okay. All right. So all those in favor for the COVID emergency days at her discretion? Uh, uh, Five zero. Well, this just seems like nothing, this next motion. <laughs> it's a recommendation of Superintendent Moracy to approve the fiscal year twenty one cyber liability insurance policy. I'll make a motion. Uh -huh. Mr. Royster, second. Questions? All those in favor? Uh, uh -huh. All right. Anybody have anything else? Do we have any questions, Mr. Collier? All good. You fucking like masked man like, over there. Like he's going Do what? Did we get any hearts? No hearts. We had a few questions, but those were all answered. So. Awesome. Oh, great. Great. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. All those. Can I get a motion for an adjournment, please? Motion. I will second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, five zero. Six fifty one. Thank you, everyone.